Okay, in this video we're going to connect a Bluetooth wireless PS3 controller to the RetroPie. I'm using RetroPie 2.4.2, but the principle should work with the um, vast majority of the RetroPie setups. Uh, I've done a separate video how to use it wired, but this is marginally different to get it using the Bluetooth. And when you've logged into your Pi there, the first thing you need to do is make sure that one, the Pi has internet access because we're going to be downloading some scripts, um, some programs, and also you need to plug in the PS3 controller using its USB cable to start with. So you need that in one USB socket, and in the other, another USB socket, you need the Bluetooth dongle. And you can get these online for about two or three pounds. They're, they're not very much at all. Pretty much any of them seem to work, so it's pretty difficult to get a duff one. And to see that uh, the Pi can see that USB dongle, if you do the command LSUSB, you'll see here a list of what it can see. The top three, um, you can pretty much ignore their um, standard based on the USB bus itself. It's these two that I've plugged in. So I've got the Bluetooth dongle here and the PlayStation plugged in by its um, USB cord there. So what we're going to do is run the RetroPie script because that's pretty much got everything all in one script for us. It's not very complicated to run. You just kick it off and it does all the hard work for you. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to have a quick look at this directory which shows what devices the uh, Raspberry Pi can see. So if we change into that directory and list it. Now, mine's got joystick 0 and joystick 1. And that's because I've already paired this by Bluetooth, so it's seeing the USB connection and the Bluetooth connection, I think. Yours will, at this stage, uh, may well have neither JS0 or JS1 because we haven't got the PlayStation drivers on yet, so you won't see that. So it's just a useful directory to see how many joysticks the system sees at the moment. If you've just got your Bluetooth, um, PlayStation controller plugged in, you probably don't have anything yet because you haven't installed the drivers. So if we go back to CD and then the tilde sign to get back to the home directory, we can change into RetroPie uh, setup directory, list that, and we're going to run the main script. So sudo full, uh, space full stop forward slash RetroPie underscore setup. And that's going to run. Again, this is um, hardly anything altered on this version of 2.4.2. I just burnt the image to the SD card and that's it, I've not configured it and that's why I haven't even resized the SD card and that's why it's complaining about not much space left here okay when you're in here, if you go, the first thing you should do actually is always update the RetroPie setup script just to make sure you've got the current version it doesn't take a second uh, it says okay, fetch the latest one you need to restart, so we go here, cancel and press the up arrow to get the command again and open it up again it's just worth making sure that you've got the, the latest details there. Okay, now if we go into setup, we the first thing you need to do is this one here, 314, install the PS3 controller driver. And this will take a few minutes. We kick that off. Here we go. You'll see a few um, bits appear. It sort of downloads the main tool, which I think is called 6axi uh, or 6 something. It, it's um, geared to... Uh, get the drivers for PlayStation controllers so you'd need to do this if you're going to do it wired or wireless it just runs through downloading the file and then I think it compiles it and then it'll install it on the Pi sort of copy it to the right directories and then it, um, it configure it and there's not an awful lot you have to do other than run this script so when it completes the next step that you do is essentially pull out the uh, USB cable and you may have to manually sync the Bluetooth by holding down the PlayStation button but we can check and uh, run through that in a second I'll add the link to the Bluetooth dongle that I'm using it's a pretty basic one I think from Hong Kong or something got it through Amazon and there's some on eBay as well so you don't need to spend an awful lot on it definitely no more than sort of say three or four pounds most of them seem quite happy in the Pi. And also, when you do this, make sure that you've got your controller charged because when it cuts out, it's it's difficult to know whether that's the problem or something else has gone wrong. So you want to make sure you've got a nice fully charged controller ready to go there. And if you image 
RetroPie. By default, it will kick into Emulation Station, and previously I found issues with that running. It tries to um, have a lock on the joypad, and because of that, it's harder to configure it um, separately. So you basically, you want to quit out of Emulation Station, put a keyboard in there, and F4 out, or just don't boot into it in the first place. So you know that's not running in the background. Uh, this is obviously connecting remotely. Okay, so it's finished compiling the, the program and now it's just copying it to the right places on the SD card and doing a few other checks. It doesn't take too much longer from this point. Okay, now it's completed all that and the first check it's going to do is make sure that the Bluetooth dongle is enabled and able to um, talk wirelessly to another device. Uh, it's, this check doesn't take a second, so I'm going to hit OK. There, that's fine. If it had failed, it would say at that point the Bluetooth dongle has failed. And, and if that's the case, you might want to try a different Bluetooth dongle or check out what might be wrong with yours. But that's passed. Now this bit, please connect your PS3 controller via the USB cable and press Enter. That already is selected, so um, connected, so I can press Enter now. But I have found for whatever reason, maybe I'm doing something wrong or something not quite right, this will always fail. So I'm kind of expecting this to fail. Try it now, enter. Yeah, cannot find the PS3 controller. Now I wouldn't worry too much if it says this because we can get around that um, by running this command that it tries manually. So I'm going to hit OK and cancel out here, cancel out here. Now to run that last section manually, you change directory to apt. Uh, RetroPy and in this directory we're going to change into supplementary and then in here we're going to go into the PS3 controller directory and there's the six pair so we're going to run that sudo full stop forward slash six pair and that's I think pretty much oh, spell it right and um, that's all you've got to do so I'm going to hit that now there we go, that's the text that you're supposed to see. Effectively, it just sets the Bluetooth MAC address. Um, I mean, that, from what I've seen, that's a sort of correct response. It's just confirmed, in my case, it's set right. But um, if you get an error there, there's a problem, but that, as far as I can see, is a pass. So that's the last stage there. Now what I'm gonna do is unplug the USB cable but to sort of see that effect, I'm going to go to this directory again that we went to earlier, CD devices, um, then input here. Ah, at the moment, I've only got JSO. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pull out the cable. So now I'm wireless. Look at that again. And I can still see the JSO, which should mean that it's paired. Now, if you don't get one here, what I'd do, what I'm going to do now, is hold down the PlayStation button and it should... Do the pairing process. So hold that down now, and it's flash. I've got the four LEDs flashing. Keep holding it down. Uh, they've turned off now. I think that is effectively turned off the controller, but it should have paired it as well at that stage. You might not need to do that. It might have already done that with the uh, six pair command we ran but it just seems sometimes you have to hold that down. Now I'm going to re-enable, actually, if I get an update here, yeah, it's turned off, so it doesn't even see the wireless one there. But I'm going to turn it back on, just tap in the PlayStation, and I've got the four LEDs flashing again. Run that again, and it sees it again. So something's definitely different when it turns on, it can see something. And what I'll do now is test to see if the JS test command can see it. So I'm now wireless with the PlayStation controller. There's no USB cable between that and the Bluetooth dongle. I've still got the other end of the USB cable plugged in, but that doesn't really matter. Okay, so JS test, and I'm going to test JSA, which is joystick zero. Press enter. It gives me a load of date. Now, if I scroll up a bit, you'll see at the top. There we go. It's detected Sony Computer Entertainment wireless controller. Uh, down the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is press some of the buttons. There you go, and you can see that flips from on and off from various, and using the Axie it's registering, which is promising obviously, because this is now wireless and this test program is detecting button presses as I press various buttons. So that has largely done it for me. I'm going to Control C to get out of there. 
and I'm going to go back in and configure that wirelessly for RetroArch, which runs the vast majority of the emulators by default. So I'm going to change directory with the tilde sign back to the home directory. Then I'm going to go and run the script again by changing into RetroPy-setup. And in here, we're going to run that setup script again, like this, RetroPy underscore setup.sh. Okay, and this point really is just going to kick it in, say yes to that, it's going to kick into setting up a controller as you would normally, and there's um, other videos I've got about how you do that. So if you want more details, you can follow those, but essentially I'm going to go set up, and then you've got this one, register retro arch controller 317. Connect only the controller to be registered, that's the only one connected, so that's fine. Okay, and this bit here is... Um, well, it's clear that it's seen it, so using Joypad, if it couldn't detect it, you wouldn't get this far, and it says it can see the wireless controller. And this bit on wireless seems more important, um, where it says press some buttons and move some axes to make sure the Joypad is completely neutral. Because it does seem to sort of sometimes stick in certain states. And the issue I've had sometimes with the Bluetooth is it's a bit laggy in response. So you press a button, but it doesn't detect it quite as quickly, and then it sticks, and you've pressed it a few times, and then it runs through a load. So we'll see how this one goes anyway. So these are, I think, in sort of neutral position now. I've pressed them. Uh, when done, press Enter. Okay, so I'm going to press Enter, and then it runs through the um, uh, button detection with a four-second limit. I'm tempted to. You can increase that four-second limit, because sometimes it can be a bit rushed. Okay, Enter. Right, B, down, yeah, there we go, detected it, left, uh, select button, start, up on the D-pad, down on the D-pad, left and right, A button, which is on the right, X at the top, left shoulder button, right shoulder button, left trigger, right trigger, uh, pressing down left on the thumb, pressing down on the right thumb, uh, right on the left axis, left on the left axis, down, up, and then on the right thumb, um, sort of analog one, down, up, and that's it. So that's all that uh, RetroArch is geared to receive, and in fact that's all the buttons on the PlayStation controller anyway, except the PlayStation button itself. And it confirms here that it's um, saved that as. If you get an error here and it says it can't save it, it could be because you've got emulation station open, so it's worth making sure you've got that closed. But there's the file it's written to, Sony Computer Entertainment Wireless Controller .cfg and we just check where that's written so you can see what it's done okay and quit out of here choose cancel there choose cancel there and we're going to change into the directory where it wrote that configuration file for our bluetooth controller uh, cd opt then retro pi uh, emulators and retroarch and then in configs okay now we're going to get a list of that ls space hyphen lah to get some details and you can see um, most of this is January the 15th, which is the, well, I guess when 2.4.2 was built, except a couple here. And this is the one that we've just created. Uh, Sony Computer Entertainment Wireless Controller. And you can read it by typing nano and start typing Sony. Uh, where are we? Sony Computer. There we go, and tab to auto complete that one. And this is what it's done. So it's just logged each of those button presses, basically, as it did uh, on the screen we saw when it ran down a minute ago. It hasn't got any hotkeys in here, so we, you can add those in. I'll do one of those quickly just to show you. But also, you can see here there's a stock configuration file. It's got PS3 controller bt.cfg. So if we'd stopped after we'd paired the device and not registered a RetroArch controller, it would probably just use this file and pick it up fine anyway. Because if I open that now, nano ps3 controller bt.cfg for Bluetooth, it says up here it's exactly the same file essentially, it's got the same name and everything, so this would kick in if you didn't open uh, or create your own really, but it's worth seeing how that works. And I want to copy out the input enable hotkey and the exit emulator for the minute zero and three and you can see oh you can see if i scroll up here that zero is select and three is start so hold down select press start it will exit out but plenty of other videos that talk about that so quitting out of that 
and now I'm going to sudo, uh, so do this administrator, nano text editor, and I'll edit the one that I just created, which is this one. And at the bottom of that file, I'm going to press the right mouse button to paste in those two lines. So I can exit out of games. Uh, that's pretty much all you've got to do in there. Input select button zero, which is um, obviously the select button, and then start to quit out. And these are all the keys that we press to configure it earlier. And you can see the, the axis there. Okay, cancel that. We want to save. Oh, that was control C to come out of that. And yes to save the changes, press enter, and those changes are saved. And that that's really all you've got to do. I'll run emulation station and you can see what happens when that kicks in and uh, how to detect the Bluetooth in there and play it in the game, obviously. Okay, so it's just booting up into emulation station and it will likely prompt for uh, it's detected a gamepad and you configure that in the same way as the others. You just uh, press a button on it to detect it and then follow the instructions. So just see how that boots up. It should be pretty quick so I won't have any many ROMs on this or anything. Not a lot of um, gameless like XML files to process or anything so should just kick into emulation station here. There we go. Okay, it said no gamepads detected because at the time I didn't have this, it turned itself off and hadn't seen it. So I think to get any further, I'm going to have to restart it, making sure that the um, control is turned on so it's got that Bluetooth connection because it's not, um, it's, ah, I am pressing it, you can see it appearing there actually. Ah, so it does kick in, so it will say that when it, if it's not turned on, like it wasn't. And you can turn it on then and it detects it on the fly, so that was pretty simple. Okay, so now I'm going to press, this is completely wireless by the way, I'm back on, it's just Bluetooth. All I've got in the Pi is a Bluetooth dongle and that's it. So up, down, left, right, so it seems quite happy detecting that. A, which is the circle, and B, which is the cross. Start, select, and left and right trigger. Uh, press OK. There we go. Um, in there and if we go to Genesis and I'll run this the um, capture card will kick out for a minute but then I'll just uh, stitch it together okay there we are game started um, we're wireless I've got the currently the four LED lights are flashing but it's paired so press start here and see if there we go it's detected that back here, start the game based on me pressing start and here we go, so left, right, that's detected, down is quite happy, jump, no problem at all. I'm not sure what the range of this Bluetooth um, dongle is but quite away from the TV as, as it stands uh, so it seems pretty good, you shouldn't have any distance issues with the reception I wouldn't have thought with most of the dongles, certainly enough uh, or more than you'd need and uh, yeah no sort of performance problems here it's pretty responsive I'm not seeing much lag really and I'm not measuring it massively accurately but it seems to be following exactly what I'm pressing uh, it's all pretty straightforward so as per the video earlier the key bits to remember really are to see what joysticks the Raspberry Pi detects and you can see that in that dev input folder so you can see what the status is um, when you insert or pull out the USB cable, it'll change. And then really just install the drivers as per that option in the RetroPie setup. And once the drivers are installed, it, although there was that minor sort of tweak we did at the end where we manually ran one of the commands, and once that's done, it's pretty much paired. Sometimes if I had a bit of a quirk, I'd hold down the um, PlayStation button to run the, make sure it is syncing, but that seems fine. If you've got any questions, uh, put it in the comments, please. Um, if it was useful, please tick the thumbs up like. And if you need any more tips, please subscribe to the channel and I'll try to put more useful videos up. Thanks very much.